guys, it's a proud cat lover. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to take care of juvenile and hatchling crested geckos. Juvenile is kind of when they've hit that five month plus age range there, then I can kind of consider them a juvenile. Until they're five months or older, I consider them hatchlings because they're still pretty tiny. So anyway, I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to look at the babies, their setups, talk some different things about them. Just because a lot of people don't realize, well, some of them might, if they're prepared. A lot of people don't realize how much work goes into taking care of baby crusty geckos. And it's not really work to me, just because it's a hobby. I really enjoy taking care of them. I like getting to see them grow up. I like seeing when their, you know, colors start to change and develop. So it's really interesting, but at the same time, it's definitely a lot of work. Um, not so much money-wise, just because a lot of their containers you can, um, adjusting my arm here, um, a lot of the containers you can purchase are super cheap. They're normally just little storage containers. They're not actual, like, little fancy glass exoteros, because they don't make small ones like that that are affordable enough to buy several of. Like, the smallest exoterra I think is like an 8x8x8 by eight by eight or something like that, and it's like 20 bucks. And if you have just one, that's no big deal. But if you have several, like six, like I have right now, going on eight, I'm waiting for Ember's first eggs to hatch, hopefully this week. So, because tomorrow is Sunday, so the upcoming week, I'm hoping that they hatch. Um, Rose has missed me because I just got home from work recently, but I felt like I should make this video. So anyway, without further ado, let's see the babies, because they're adorable. Okay, guys, so here is all the different tanks we have. So I'm not going to tell prices because I've already made a video for that. So if you guys want to see any of those videos, you can go to my Crested Gecko playlist because I have one for my Crested Geckos. They should be the videos at the very bottom, I believe, is where all the new ones are put. If not, they're going to be at the very top, either one. But I've already discussed prices and stuff and how to put these together. So this is mainly just going to be talking about how to care for the babies. The general daily care, anyway. So... First one is, when it comes to feeding, I have to take every baby out every night and feed them individually. I only do that because, one, I have grain mites, so I can't stick individual dishes in every single tank because the mites will get in there, and I don't want to have to deal with them having babies again. Like, I find every... I'll find one, like, every so often. I think they're finally starting to die off. I think the only reason they're still around is because eggs are hatching that they've laid around my room. I don't feed any of my reptiles in their tanks. I feed them their food while they're sitting on my lap and then I take their bowls and I rinse them immediately so that there's no way that the mites are going to get in there. So I take out every baby and feed them every night. I normally get them out around 11 o'clock or midnight or on from that because where they are nocturnal they prefer to be um, fed at night. Because if you disturb them during the day, they're going to be tired, sleepy, and they're going to be like, what the heck, leave me alone. So, with the juveniles that I have, that are pretty much going to be five months next month. Because on the 19th of June, Ash and Pecan are going to be five months old. So, they get fed every other day. But the new babies that are under five months old get fed every night. So... <coughs> That is one of the things that you have to worry about when you have babies. Now, the other reason that I do not stick their food in there, even if I didn't have grain mites, is what they like to do is they will walk in the food. And I only know this because Ember was four months old when I got her. And every time I'd put her food in there, she would walk in it. She'd spread it all over her glass, make a huge mess. And then her toes would get stuck together because the food would dry on her feet. It was a pain in the butt having to go in with a Q-tip and clean her toes because she was squirming. She was like, leave me alone. And then I'd have to clean her tank. So I figured when these babies all hatched, they were not going to be getting food in their tanks because I didn't want to have to clean their tanks every single night from them spreading their food everywhere. Um, also, when I'm feeding them myself, I can see how much they're taking in. And I can see, you know, I can kind of look them over and check them and make sure they're doing okay. Make sure there's no respiratory infections going on, as in, like, if you hear popping every single time they breathe, then they might have respiratory. Now, when they're babies, I don't think the vets can really do anything about it because they're so tiny that there's not a proper dosage for them. 
only know this because a person in my Crusty Gecko group was having that problem. The vet couldn't give them anything because they were too tiny. So, anyway, with humidity-wise, their tanks do have to be sprayed every night. Now, in the winter, I would spray them in the morning as well because our heater was running and it made our house really dry. But in the summer, most of the time, my room does stay at around 60% or higher with humidity. I have been having to run my humidifier recently just because, for some reason, it's really dry in our house. Normally, that doesn't happen in the summer. Normally, that's only in the winter. So, over there, I have this nice humidifier. I got that humidifier off of Wish. They have an app for your phone or you can get on the website. I think I only paid maybe $20. $25 or $30, somewhere in there. But most of the time, humidifiers cost around $50 plus. So that was a really good purchase. I was kind of hesitant when I bought it, but it had good reviews and I have never once had an issue with it. It's amazing. So I will possibly put the description, I will possibly put the link for that in the description so that you guys can check it out if you're looking for a nice humidifier. It only holds, I think, like a gallon of water. But if I have it on medium, then it doesn't really go through it that quickly. And where my room is small, I don't really need it any higher than medium. So anyway, back to this. Humidity-wise, I miss their tanks once every evening. Even if they're not getting fed, I still miss their tank. Just like the adults miss their tank every night. Kind of an opportunity for them to get some extra liquids in them in the evening. Because they do like to lick them off the foliage. Anyway, we'll next move on to the size of babies and their ages. So in here, we have Toffee. Toffee was hatched, if I can fix the lid, <laughs> on the 21st of this month. Bramble, let me get his container open, was hatched on the 6th of April. And he's kind of right there. And Ash was laid, or not laid, sorry, hatched on the 19th. Of January. I'm going to take his lid off real quick. Okay, so that way I can open these up. Everyone looks like they're fired up right now except for Ash. So I'm going to get each of them out so you guys can see the different size, size differences depending on their age. Okay guys, so here are the three different ages. So of course Ash here is going to be five months old. Bramble here is a month old and right here is our few week or almost a week old baby here. It'll be a week old in a few days. So you can see here the different sizes between newborn five months and a month if I can get them all on my fingers. It's kind of difficult sometimes. So you can see this guy here. Now you really can't tell because they will not sit next to each other. They literally will just run away as fast as they can. Okay, I got them to sit still for like a few seconds. So here you can kind of tell a little bit better of the size. So you can see how Toffee here is pretty small compared to his, his one-month sibling. So he's actually like two inches shorter than him. Of course, we have Ash over here, who is quite a lot larger when it comes to the body size. So as you can see, quite a big difference here. Now, I can't let Ash get too close to the babies because um, both her and Pecan kind of act a slightly aggressive when it comes to the newborns. So I normally don't let um, her next to the new babies, only the ones that are a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and pick him up and we'll move on to the next part of interesting facts that I just thought of. Okay, so first off I'll show you, these are the two tanks for the babies. Now these ones here are almost old enough to be moved on to a bigger tank like what Ash has here, but they're still just small enough that they're not ready yet. So with the babies, I normally do not hang any of the plants like I do with these ones when they're older because when the hatchlings hatch, they mainly like to hide at the very bottom of the tank, so I kind of just let the stuff droop down. As they get older, I will add a suction cup like I've done here so that there's more height because they'll start climbing more. And then, of course, when they move on to this tank here, it offers a lot more height. They have a little water dish, so they're used to bowls. If they're drinking out of them, then when they go off to their new homes, they'll at least be accustomed to, hey, I can associate the bowl with food or water, whichever. But at least they have a bowl, so they are used to drinking out of it. Of course, these two tanks are a bit too small to have a bowl in because, especially in this one here where the ground is covered, in here maybe I could fit one, but 
Normally when they get a little bit older is when I add the bowl to the tank when they get this one. I will show you guys real quick how to pick up baby crested geckos safely. So <laughs> let me see if I can um, get Toffee to cooperate. Okay, so let's say that the baby crested gecko is in a position where you do not want to come in and grab it because it could scare them and believe me when they're little you don't want to scare them. You don't want them to drop their tails because it's just traumatizing for them. So I have figured out a way and I'm sure other people have already figured this out, but if you're a first time breeder like me and you didn't know about it because none of my videos I've ever watched of people with babies has ever showed how to safely pick them up by their tails. I will show you how to do that. So what you do is, hey, stop moving please. Stick your finger underneath their tail. Let me see if I can get him in the position. I'll just demonstrate it by sticking him on his tank. Because <clears throat> then he can't walk up my leg. Okay, stay. So you'll just come underneath the tail here. Oh. And you just lift. Because they will wrap their tails around your finger like he's doing here because their tails are prehensile kind of like a, a few monkeys have so they will lift themselves onto your finger essentially because they will grab your finger and hold on to it with their tail so you're not actually really doing any pulling you're not really grabbing the tail you're just kind of touching it and then they will wrap it around your fingers like he just did there and hang from it because they can hang from their tails. I've seen the adults hang from their tails before in their tanks from plants and stuff. So that is a safe way that you can pick the babies up. It's really gentle. You don't have to worry about them feeling threatened. Now if you have a really skittish baby, I would not suggest doing that. <laughs> if it will not walk onto your hand and you can't get it to scoop up with the tail, then just kind of give it a moment to uh, relax. My f <laughs> camera just keeps on unfocusing itself. But um, I think that's mainly a lot of the stuff I wanted to talk about, because we talked about feeding, humidity, and we talked about how to pick them up safely from the tails. Of course, you want to be real gentle when you go to pick them up. I kind of just prod them a little bit till they walk to the top of their tank so that they can walk onto my hand. Now, with the older babies, you don't have to be as worried or concerned, because in here, we have Ash. Now, what I do with her... I just kind of come around underneath and her stupid tank is falling over. <laughs> That's the one bad thing about these. And I kind of just scoop her up from her belly like I do with the adults. And I'm just going to leave that laying down because it's going to knock over the other tanks. With the bigger babies, they really don't do the tail thing as much. Like, she still will kind of do it a little bit, you can see here. But um, with them, once they get big enough, you don't have to worry about picking them up by the tail. So, she, as you can see, is a lot bigger She's not really completely fully fired up right now, but I'm going to go ahead and stick her back in here. With the bigger babies, you don't have to be as worried, but you still do want to be gentle, of course. This is going to conclude our little care video, slash just kind of visiting about babies. So anyway, I hope that you guys learned something new, or just enjoyed the video, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good rest of your evening.